Hello everyone, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation. Welcome to Road to Destiny as we celebrate the end of another year. Wow, God has been so good. This is our 16th year as a church. I think about all God has done for us and where he's brought us from, uh, the things that he's allowed to happen in through this church, both naturally and spiritually. I thank God for the people that have come in and, and through and who have been blessed in various ways. Man, I, I'm honored right now to say we've come to the conclusion of another year. We're getting ready to celebrate New Year's Eve coming this week. And uh, we, it's always a great time here, a time to really get into the anointing of God as we come together to see out the old year and to take into the new, take that step into the new. You know, uh, we talk about this time the past couple of months has been a time to think about the year we've been through. And now we're about to journey into the next year. And in January, we'll be starting to prepare for what's gonna be happening in the new year. We wanna prepare spiritually as well. So we'll be going into prayer and fasting in January. We'll have special services here. We'll be focused on listening and hearing from God in terms of our direction uh, for the new year. And I'm not just talking about the church, I'm talking about our homes, our families, you as an individual. I invite you to connect up with us in whatever way you wanna do that, either by television, following through, you can, uh, from home, just support and join us in prayer and fasting, but more, more so, you'll be blessed if you come and connect up with us here. Starting, uh, coming up this week with New Year's Eve. Our New Year's Eve service will be taking place here beginning at 10 o'clock uh, p.m. And we will be celebrating, we'll be uh, sharing and getting ready for a great, great launch and transition into 2020. Can you imagine? 2020. And then we'll be continuing on throughout the month of January in some very special services. We'll have more about that. But come and connect up with us here at Destiny Preparation Church. Now I'm going to take you to this closing sermon of the year. This is a sermon called Pressing On. And this is about that transition of having to move from where you've been and to press into where you're going. Sometimes it, it, it comes naturally, but sometimes you got to press through. There's some children that, that are birthed naturally, and there's some that have you got to press on through. And so I want to encourage you as we bring in this new year, it's time to let go of the past and move into where God is taking you. God bless you. I hope we'll see you here this week and in 2020. God bless. Tonight, I want to talk to you just for a few moments about this scripture in Philippians, because the scripture really is the core of where we are headed uh, throughout this month. There are four, four statements that I gave you this morning that come out of this passage that I want you to consider and meditate on and we'll be talking about throughout the month. First of all, the four things that are on your bulletin. Step number one uh, is, 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 to, is to hear from God. On your bulletin, it says, speak to me. It's to hear from God. The first thing we have to do this month to really go where God would have us to go is we have to hear from God. And one thing I'm going to talk to you about next week is about it's important to be in the right position to hear from God. We're going to talk about that next week. But in order to hear from God, you've got to get positioned to hear from God. That's the first thing that has to happen. And step two, the second thing is you have to learn how to let go. Tell somebody you got to let go. let go. It's like we were talking about Lot's wife. Just we we're talking about the, the children of Israel, all these things that we hold on to, all these things that become our priorities. You got to let go. There, there has to be a release. You have to release things that you already have in order to gain things that God wants to give you. Oh, y'all need to hear that right now. Let me say it again. You have to release things that you already have in order to gain some things that God wants to give you. That's why, Peter, that's why Paul says here, forgetting those things which are behind. Listen, there are some things that are behind you that you just need to forget about. You need to let them go. Forgetting those things that are behind so you can reach for those things that are ahead. After you let go, number three is you have to make a plan. You have to begin to look forward. That's about visioning. You have to get your mind on where you're going. You have to make a plan forward. Let go of the past and put your mind on the things that are ahead of you so that number four, you can finally take a step. And taking a step means you have to make a commitment. Amen. 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 Your step, your stepping out. Peter's stepping out of the boat 
meant that he had had a commitment to what God wanted him to do. You can stand in the boat all you want and say, okay, God, I'm glad to know I can walk on water. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for allowing me for opening that door. But until you take a step out on the water, it doesn't mean anything. You've got to make a commitment. A lot of people have a lot of things we want to do and you, we sincerely want to do them. And yeah, I want to see them happen in the glory of God and God's going to do it. I believe for great things, but we will not make a commitment to what we're believing God for. And so guess what? It never happens. In this passage of scripture in Philippians, Peter, Paul here is talking about his own personal experience. And he's talking about some of the things that that he has has been through and not only just been through, but accomplish. Paul is talking about his accomplishments here and, and, and the level of those things. And this passage of scripture really defines, if you will, uh, the, the, the theology the, the, uh, of this church, the doctrine of this church about pressing for more. Everybody say pressing for more. Pressing. Amen. We, we believe in the idea of going for more. You can never get too satisfied. You can ne- you're never there. A lot of times in our Christian walk, and a lot of times as Christians, we, we, we kind of plateau. We reach a place where we feel like, okay, you know, I, I'm good here, right? A lot of people have a mindset, you know. We ask things like, you know, what, what's, what do I have to do to be saved? <laughs> you know, and, and once we feel that we're saved, then, then we're good, right? I, I've done what I need to do. Some people feel comfortable as long as, they, yeah, I'm still praying, so, you know, I'm, I'm still good, right? I, I'm still, you know, I haven't cursed at anybody today. I, I'm still good, right? We, 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 we have a mindset of, of making it to some level that we can then say, okay, I'm, I'm there, and, and now I can just kind of float at this level. As long as I at least stay at this level, I'm okay. And so our struggle isn't going higher. It's just staying where we are. Oh, I think I slipped off a little bit today. I fell a little bit short. I got to get back up to that level. And now I'm back up the level and I'm good. But I want you to understand that we need to have a mindset, not just to, to, to maintain, but to excel, to pursue, to go higher. Every one of us, I don't care how long you've been saved. You may have been saved five minutes. You may have been, been saved 50 years. Every one of us has an obligation to continue to pursue after more of God. Because for each, I don't care what kind of glory cloud you've been on. I don't care what kind of vision you had. I don't care what kind of anointing came on you. There is still more. Tell somebody real quick, there's still more. These are the words of the apostle Paul, whom we all recognize to be a great man of God, right? He is considered to be a man uh, uh, who was an apostle. He was a man that spent time with the Lord. He saw God and learned from God face to face. This is a man who had achieved some great things. And in this passage, he's talking about some of the achievements that he had experienced. But he puts it into levels, into layers. And if you read this quickly, you don't fully understand it because it has some kind of inverse language based on the way they wrote things. But I really want you to see see and understand what he is describing and what he is saying here in these early earlier verses of this uh, of this chapter it starts out in, in verse one finally my brethren uh rejoice in the lord to 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 write the same thing i rejoice in the lord to write uh, the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you is safe. And he goes on and talks about a few things, but I want to jump down to verse four, where he says, verse four, he says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Amen. Go back to verse three. He says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. He says that there are others that, that have, have confidence in where, what they've achieved and what they've become. And he's talking about the difference between those who were Christians and those who were Jews who, who, who prevailed. They felt they prevailed in God because they were circumcised in their flesh. And that's why he compares to that and says, we are the circumcision, not, not the Jews, not just Jews. He's talking about those of us who follow after Christ, those of us who are saved. He says, we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit 
and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. In other words, we're, we're not saved simply because of our flesh being circumcised, because of that old uh, 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 covenant that we had with God. He says we are those who are serving God. We've been circumcised in the spirit. And so he puts on here, if you will, a level, a higher level than the initial uh, kind of a, a commitment that they had with God, the initial covenant that the Jews had, he's saying that we're even above that. And I want you to see these layers as they begin to rise. But he says this in verse 4. He says, though I might also ha uh, have confidence in the flesh. He says, if any other man. In other words, he's saying that, you know, well, you know, I could, if there's anybody that could have confidence and what's happened in the flesh, I'm one that could have confidence because I've, I've achieved some things, right? He says, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He says, circumcised of the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, and touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He describes here all the things that he had achieved on his own of himself. He's looking at what he has achieved in his natural walk. And he's giving some credence to that. He's saying he's giving some relevance to that. Look, there was a time when the things that I did for God, these were the things that I did. And this is how I lined up. Some of them were things that are even beyond him. He said he was born of a certain tribe and he was uh, born on a certain day, circumcised on a certain day. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. In other words, in his natural ability, he had done everything that could be done for him to be righteous with God had already been done. He's saying that's an achievement. He said, if anybody could have confidence in the flesh, I could. Because I have done everything that I could possibly do in order to be pleasing to God. There are those that feel that they are pleasing to God because they have done everything they could possibly do. I stopped doing all these wrong things. I stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. I stopped talking about people. I stopped lying. I stopped stealing. I stopped swearing. I stopped. I did all. I got all rid of all this stuff. I changed my clothes. I look holy now. I, I'm behaving a certain way. Everything I could possibly do in my flesh in the natural I have done and guess what now I've arrived I'm there I've made it I've made it to my level amen there are people that feel that way I was baptized amen I did this I did the other amen I'm straight if anybody's straight I'm straight amen if anybody's going to heaven, it must be me because I'm living right, looking right, acting right, saying all the right stuff. Amen. Holding my tongue, doing that, going to church on the right days. Amen. Giving the right things, behaving the way I should behave. I must be righteous. That's Paul. Paul saying, you know, if anybody could boast in their flesh. I got some things I could boast about. I have some righteousness in me because of the way that I that way I behave. But he goes on beyond that. In verse uh, number seven and says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. In other words, everything that I did of my own, amen, I let that all go in terms of its priority, in terms of its value in comparison with what I took on when I started following after Christ. You need to understand there's a higher level. There's more than just doing what you can do of yourself. He said, you know, I, I got past what I could do and I started really focusing myself on doing what Christ wanted to do and being what he wanted me to be. It got beyond just changing my behaviors. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. I want to follow Christ in a way that puts everything I could do aside. And I want to be more and more like him. He says in verse eight, yeah, doubtless I and I count all things but loss for the excellency and knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He's talking about all the things that he used to elevate himself. He let them all go. You can be good, you can be nice, you can behave, you can dress, you can change everything about yourself, but there's still something more that will make you more of what God would have you to be. He says in verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, not having my own righteousness, 
which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. He's talking about another phase, a higher level, not just what I do and how I behave, but this thing, I want to really know him. I want to know beyond just behaviors. I want to know what God thinks. I want to know how God feels about things. I want to know instinctively the way God would behave. I don't want to just wear it on my wrist in terms of what would Jesus do. I want my heart to be changed so that I will behave the way God behaves. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know everything there is to know about him tell somebody there's another level it's not just you've got to move past so many people are are just just at this level of you know i just want to get my behaviors right act right do right and and, you know as long as i'm 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 doing all that i'm okay he said this is paul the apostle paul that says i need to go higher than that i need to get beyond what i can do i've got to get soaked up, saturated in the ways, in the attitude, in the mindset, in the power, in the presence of God. It's not enough until I become saturated with the presence of God. How many of you ever felt like, you know, it's never, it's not enough because I'm still not feeling God and knowing God in everything that I'm doing. Y'all know what it is sometimes to be kind of up on a cloud, amen, in the spirit, and you just you, you feel good, you feel the presence of God, you feel things lifted, but then, you, you know, you don't stay there. Sometimes you come back down. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Many times we come in the church and we just feel the presence of God and we're ready and we're charged, and then we go outside the door, and guess what? <laughs> Down the hill we go, back into the cesspool of life, back into the stuff, the mess that's waiting for you at home, back into the confusion that happens out on the street. All that focus that we had on God and loving God, all of a sudden now it becomes blurred and confounded by all the real life situations that come and hit you in the face. He says it's not enough just to behave like I know God. I need to be saturated to the point that I actually act in every situation, in every circumstance, like the presence, the anointing of God is pouring over me. But even that's not enough. That's just the second phase. Come on, I told you there's still more. That's then when he gets to what we just read earlier in verse 12. After getting to that level where I just want to know him and feel him and be saturated with him, he says in verse 11, if by any means... I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12, he says, not as though I already had already attained, either were already perfect. Listen, even after going to that level, it's not like I've already attained, not that I've already gotten there. There's still more I've got to go. Even when I'm saturated with him, I'm still hungering after more. You see, we quit hungering way too soon. We lose our hunger for God. We lose that thirst for God way too soon. We have a moment and we become satisfied. We pray for a couple of minutes and then, okay, let's move on. No, no, you've got to get to the point where it is not enough. As you go through this month of January, you've got to raise your stakes. You've got to raise your hunger. You've got to make up your mind. Listen, where I've been in the past is no longer enough. I need more. Paul here says, look, after all that I've been pursuing, I've already let go of what I could do. I've already pursued and given off to whatever God God can do through me. But even that's not enough. He says, I still haven't obtained. It's in that mindset that he pursues and says, he says, not that I've already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend for that which I also I am apprehended for Christ. He says, brethren, I Count not myself to have apprehended. This is a man who had seen, amen, God face to face. 
This is a man who had been up into the third heaven as he described it. This is a man who had seen and witnessed and experienced paradise. This woman was a man that had seen people healed, amen, even as he walked through. This is a man that spoke to demons, amen, in people and they fled. Now, how many, some of us ain't, we haven't quite made it there yet, amen? You know what I'm talking about? This is a man that knew something about moving and operating in the power and the presence of God. But he's saying, I have not yet ever apprehended. I'm here to tell you, saints, we get satisfied too soon. There is more of God to be had. He says, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things behind. Listen, there are some things you've been through in the past, and I'm not just talking about bad things. Those experiences that you had with God that you're still holding on to that you thought were so great. Listen, there comes a time you've got to forget about that because that is no longer enough. How God touched you last year and how God moved in your life when you first got saved and what you felt when you first spoke in tongues. That is not enough. I need something more now. I need a presence that will move in me now. I need a life-changing experience now. I've got to get hungry for more of God now. Come on, somebody ought to hear what I'm saying today. He said, forgetting those things that are behind. No matter what level I've achieved, I've left that behind. That was is good for the moment but I realize there's still more to be had of God so I'm ready to forget about the things the achievements I'm ready to forget about the accomplishments yes I saw God in the past but I'm forgetting about that yes I felt the anointing one day but I'm forgetting about that yes I knew what God could do in my life yes I've seen miracles yes I've seen healing yes I've seen demons tremble but forget about those things that are behind I'm reaching for those things that are ahead why because I have not yet attended I've not yet obtained there's still more for me come on somebody ought to believe today there is still more for you we've got to get hungry enough to pursue we've got to stop being satisfied where we are we've got to stop being satisfied with the level on we, that we are on and realize there is still more to be had I press towards the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus there is still more in God for me God has still more to release into my life there's still more anointing to be received there's still another word to be heard yesterday's word was good but I'm forgetting Getting about the things that are behind because today I want more from God. Come on, God, speak to me again. Come on, God, show me again. Show me something more. Open up the windows of heaven. Let me see something I've never seen before. How many of you want to see something from God you've never seen before? Hallelujah, you've got to get your mind, your heart ready, amen, to go up to another level. Yes, I've experienced some things. Yes, I've been in places where the anointing has come down. Yes, I've been in places where it seemed like there was a cloud of, in the atmosphere because of the presence of God. Yes, I've seen demons coming out of people. Yes, I've seen people touched and healed. But I want to receive more from God. That was good from yesterday. But forgetting those things that are behind, I'm reaching for something more in 2018. God. God, I need another anointing. I need a double portion. I need to know your presence is with me in a whole nother level. I want to see you move like you've never moved before. I want to see victory like I've never seen it. I want to see things broken. I want to see shackles broken. I want to see the power of God move like never before. Come on, how many of you want to see God move? Hallelujah, you've got to get your mind ready for greatness. Amen. Enough of this just clinging on to where we are. I don't even just want to get back to where I was. Amen. There was a day we sung, take me back, but I don't want to go back anymore. I want to go forward. Amen. Where I was was good, but I know there's something even greater than what God did for me before. Lord, don't take me back. Take me higher. Take me where you are. Take me into your presence. Take me to where the anointing is. Take me to where great things are happening. God, I want to see change happen all around me you've got to get your mind ready for something great you've got to get your expectation levels up amen stop amen waiting for God just to do what he did before you've got to believe for God to do something greater than what he did in the past 
Here's a man, a man who had experienced greatness of God like we've never experienced before. He had seen and experienced things, amen, that we could only imagine. We read about it and we get excited about it. But he's saying it's not enough. There's even more from you, God, that I want to know. There's even more from you, God, that I want to experience. I want you to touch me like you've never touched me before. I want you to use me like you've never used me before. God, I want to see what you truly can do. How many of you are ready to challenge God to say, Lord, show me what you, I want to see what you can really do. Oh, hallelujah. I want to see you making ways out of no ways. I want to see you turning situations around. I want to see you opening doors that I didn't even know were there. I want to see you working things out on my behalf, Lord. I want to see how great you are. How many of you want to really see how great God really is? God, show me how great you are. Show me what you're really able to do. If you're truly God, let me see you be God. I'm tired of just going through this thing on my own. God, let me see what a true God is all about. Show me your power. They tell me you're amazing. Let me see it for myself. They tell me your glory is awesome. God, show me what your glory looks like for yourself. Open me up to the windows of heaven, God. Show me what you're truly able to do. How many of you are ready to stretch out and press towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ? God, I need more. I need more. There comes a time when we have to stop being so satisfied, so content with where we are. Sometimes, you know, we just feel like, look, as long as there's nothing bad happening, <laughs> uh, I'm good. Just let, me, just let me stay right here. Amen. Nothing, no, no rough rides. Amen. I, I'm, I'm making it. I'm paying the bills. I'm, I'm getting by. Hey, let me just hey, stay here. But we've got to get ourselves ready to the mindset where that no longer is satisfying enough.